There must be very few people left in the Western world who haven't heard Nimrod at some time in their life. It is truly one of the most sublime and quintessentially English of pieces. This single movement, which you'll find in issue 71 of Pianist magazine, comes from Elgar's Enigma variations, of course, and like most variations, we hear the theme repeated, but with a very different treatment to the previous variations. In fact, it's interesting that the theme has actually a 3-4 time signature, but actually in this case the performance is so slow that there really is very little rhythmic indication of this at all. So it's important to be sure of the melodic structure, the highs and the lows and the direction. Let's just try as an experiment playing the theme at a faster speed and see if we can make more sense of this. Now I'm also going to use the metronome so you can hear the pulse and the beginning of the bar with a kind of ping sound. Now, as you can hear, these interval leaps seem to play across the time signature, which further disguises any rhythmic grouping. The upshot of all of this is the importance of knowing the character and direction of the melody before attempting to interpret it. Now, of course, the other immediate challenge is taking a piece written for an orchestra and trying to convey the same level of expression to the piano. Unlike an orchestra, the piano doesn't have the ability to crescendo through a note. Once that note's played, it will decay. Whereas, of course, a string section can make a single note swell in a very expressive way. So we need to tackle this piece in a musical way, but using pianistic techniques available to us. One crucial consideration will be creating enough sustain We'll need to use the pedal very carefully and really monopolise on its sustaining qualities that the particular piano we're playing has. So if I play from bar 9, The other very important factor to consider is making the melody line sing out. For this, we really need to consider voicing each chord with precision. A good starting point here is to make sure that your fingers are in contact with each key before being played. And also, of course, quick hand positioning is essential. Try using our practice technique we've used before by playing the harmony notes in the right hand with a soft staccato and the melody as a legato. The challenge is playing both the legato and the staccato notes simultaneously as a chord and keeping the hand relaxed at all times. You might find this very tricky to begin with and that the notes don't always play exactly together. But you should find the melody starts to stand out more with practice. Try the left hand too. For example, from bar one, play the bass notes legato and the upper notes softly and staccato. This, of course, 
is all about finger independence, which helps us voice the chord. That is to say, choose which notes we want to stand out more in that chord. To finish, practice with both hands, but using, if you like, the same touch. You may indeed find this very tricky at first. Of course, the fingering also is very vital here. And I always prefer to err on the side of caution and try to achieve as much legato in the fingering alone so that my dependency on the sustain pedal is lessened. For example, the left hand can achieve this in the opening bars with substitute fingering, which we've seen before. Now you'll find this kind of fingering will help you achieve a good legato before you've even introduced the sustain pedal. As mentioned, the sustain pedal will add a great deal to creating the mood of the piece. We're looking for the perfect overlap with each chord. Take a look at my foot during the section from bar nine. Could you see that I was clearing each chord with the pedal and fairly quickly too? Just because the speed of the piece is slow, it doesn't mean that the pedaling will be. It's all about quick preparation. Also be careful with the melody. Where these interval jumps occur, bar three to six, for example, need to clearly define these melodic jumps. So make sure the pedal doesn't carry on the previous note. For example, at bar three, you're looking for the clarity, like so. Rather than some of the melody notes holding over, Now, finally, be sure to create these dynamic differences. The crescendos are hard to achieve at this speed because we want a smooth approach. And of course, the natural decay of the piano notes will not help this. So be very aware. If I take it from bar 14, Of course, with a digital piano, we have other sounds, and maybe you'd like to layer a sound. Why not try layering a string sound with the piano sound that you're playing? Keep the level, of course, quite low, but it will add to the sustain.
As you can see, this may be a slow piece, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Be sure to listen to a recording of the original. It all helps to create your own interpretation.